Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, it's really my pleasure to be back to Kiev. I'm coming to this country and this city very obviously and always there is some different situation in the country. We actually organized in this very room about five years ago conference on EU and Ukraine, but context was quite different then than it's now. And probably since the situation in your country is changing, there is such an enormous interest in EU affairs and also to learn a bit about how we countries of either members of the European Union or those who are trying to become members are dealing with European Union. So what I will do today is that in my presentation will be in three parts through which I would like to stimulate the discussion. First, I will describe how EU assisted your neighbor, Slovakia, which is also a new country and which already made it to the European Union. Second, I will tell you a bit what worked and what didn't work so well between European Union and civil society groups in my country. And third, I will try to look at what you Ukrainians can learn from us and what you can't learn, what you need to do on your own, because you are First, why European Union assisted civil society in civil society development field? Slovakia, similar to like Ukraine, is a new country which was born after the collapse of the communist bloc, Soviet dominating bloc. And our country said we want to develop a pluralistic democratic system to market economy and we want to join the European Union. The European Union said fine and we will help you with that. The EU was helping with state institutions building free market economy system and EU designed also process of assistance to civil society which is indispensable part of overall reforms. For this European Union, which opened delegation in our country, design program with Fare, Pazis here, through which they allocated money for civil society development. In our country, it was not administered by delegation, but by unique indigenous foundation, which was created, and it's called Foundation for Civil Society Development. This had nothing to do, I mean, board consisting of independent people, no governmental, no EU people. EU could have oversight, but we were administering this uh, fund on our own, and this was the main instrument. Original idea was that this foundation will work until Slovakia joins the European Union. We did in 2004, but foundation con continues working now and gives money to other countries, not to Slovak civil society development through this fund. We are supporting this foundation, we are supporting projects in the Balkans in the past, the Bratislava Belgrade Fund, and now via Norwegian money, we are assisting also in Ukraine. This uh, European Convention and several other cross-border projects were supported through this uh, instrument. Besides that, Slovakia was assisted also by bilateral EU member countries, MATRA program, which is close, UK, all kinds of programs, German foundations and others. So you always have an is assisting you EU money, but also individual countries. What worked well? In our case, this independent foundation for civil society development was quick and flexible grant making system which responded to needs from local, regional and national foundations, NGOs, civil societies, the organizations, think tanks, all kinds of organizations. Secondly, it avoided interference of political forces or EU bureaucracy. Third, it increased reputation of NGOs in country and in European Union. What were the obstacles? Uh, when we had Prime Minister, probably you have not forgotten the name, Mechiar, Vladimir the Great, he always tried to attempt to control this fund, but he didn't manage so well, because NGOs and EU, in a way, 
were able to balance his attempts. Politicians in every country has temptation to control money, which namely those money which are sort of looking at their fingers. Uh, secondly, government uh, attempted to discredit NGOs at some period. And this foundation, together with delegation and other EU embassies, helped not to allow this. Uh, because NGOs were accused of being spies, interfering with domestic affairs, and some of the things you probably know in this country as well. Thirdly, what was difficult that uh, uh, this foundation had difficulty, especially in the field which were politically sensitive, supporting health, civil society, orphanages, elderly homes, no problem. But once this foundation supported think and analytical things, and even unheard of pre-election activities, voters, information, monitoring, foundation faced a lot of attacks, but we managed. And also what was obstacle, and I think that this is what you need to look at, EU will never admit that they did mistakes. Because everything what they do, one ambassador after another will declare victory. This is built into the nature of EU. So you need to figure out and find out how to be critical, but in such a way that they will not collapse or not stop giving you support. What you can learn in five points, Active and independent civic sector is as critical as free and independent media. Second, civil society must have capacity to address not only social, educational, health, youth, and other issues, but NGOs must be able and capable of stepping into public policy arena. Third, this is ongoing struggle. As we heard in Hungary, but also in my country, corruption, uh, and all kinds of associated fields, they remain, whether you join me or not in your NGO work in all of these fields, is critically important, and surely other colleagues on this panel will talk about that. Fourth, I think that where we fail a bit, NGOs and civil society and EU support, we overlooked issues like culture, religion, national identity, these issues which are a little bit more metaphysical for civil society people. They think that this is none of their business. But I think that if we are not doing this, politicians will misuse feelings and they will start developing argument like in my country that stability is more important than democracy and similar type of things. You're not slowly. Yeah. I'm speaking about my country. I cannot interfere in domestic affairs. Fifth, EU assistance needs to be combined, then again it's uh, or cross-linked with US. Americans are giving much more money in the end to civil society development than EU. And the, how clever you are to combining and designing some things where the monies are combined is a method of success. What you can learn, what you can't learn, and I'm finishing with this blog, every country is different. You can learn, but there are many things where local context matters. For example, Yushchenko, not only you, but we believe you'll be like Václav Havel. He is not. Václav Havel until today is stimulating people's thinking about values of civil society, democracy. Yushchenko and his ideals were not bad ones. Unfortunately, he didn't manage as leader. Václav Havel did. Like Václav did. Also, for our leaders, their ideals were not bad. But today's Pora leader, former Pora leaders need to be controlled and checked as they preached before. EU factor. EU at the time when Slovakia was joining or pre-accession Slovakia was strong, self-confident, powerful. Today EU is in crisis. EU has trouble with Euro. EU has all kinds of other internal troubles, and you are living in non-enlargement paradigm period. At that time, enlargement was given 
for you, nobody is telling you that if you do this, you join the EU. For us, it was clear. It was like test. 20 chapters, if you pass, then you are in. Nobody is talking to you like this. So you need to figure out how to deal with EU as EU is and take as much as possible you can in period on a mental and political state and economic state of the EU because the EU wants to help you. Also, I think that EU is part of much bigger global competition with China and other places. So EU is going with these post-Lincoln periods of profound change. You should use V4, Visegrad 4 program. This year, Hungary and Poland is having presidency. Both are your neighbors. So your neighbors are driving or, or are stepping or are playing important role. Try to use it this year. And you have Stefan Fila, who is Czech, who studied in Moscow, who speaks Russian, who can talk and understand you. You, Stefan Fila, directly as much as you can. He's open-minded when it comes to civil society. Miroslav Lajca, former foreign minister of Slovakia, is now within Catherine National team, responsible for your country and other countries as well. He understands that of civil society, approaching directly, use as much as possible contacts with him. <coughs> Russia factor. Russia didn't interfere into our EU integration process at all. Russia was not a factor influencing our transformation. Different in your country. You need to build it into your thinking because you are living in between two geopolitical realities which you may need to take into consideration. And last, that after 20 years since I'm engaged one way or another in civil society development in my country and in the region, I came to one simple fact. How you can value and look at civil society or individual or collectively, the key thing is whether you are useful, whether you have results, whether you are perceived by the public as useful, and whether you are politically relevant. And I think that you have an enormous network of NGOs and civic energy, and if you will stop looking at problematic parts and emphasize the power of your civic energy and wish to live in standard, normal, clean country, you will manage an additional good luck in that. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. I always like listening to your uh, very practical judgment. And